So I didn't realize, but this is apparently a thing. And I was told it by two salespeople who work at completely different boutiques. They don't know each other. And they were both telling me on completely different occasions, they were telling me about customers that had gone in, in during their time working for these places, customers that have, had been in carrying fake bags. And they were not talking about it in a very favorable way. Now, I've done videos before talking about fakes and about the detrimental and really nasty consequences they have when it comes to funding criminal activity. And I'll link to that video below. When it comes to fakes, I'm not gonna judge anyone, that's your call. But I am saying, if you want to be taken seriously, don't take a fake bag in a boutique because the chances are the people working there will recognize it as being fake and that can limit your ability to get served and get treated with the respect um, and attention to detail that you would want. Hey everyone, welcome to another video. If you are new, welcome. My name is Sophie and if you are one of my regulars, welcome back. So let's talk about how you can be taken seriously when you go into luxury boutiques. And really I'm talking about when you go in, how can you get served? And when you're being served, how can you get good service? Good example is you go in, you're looking at the animal BB, let's say, example bag. You're looking at that bag, let's say it's 1200 pounds. I'm not sure how much it is now, probably is even more than that. But I always think if you're looking at one bag and it's that price point, Look at other bags from the same brand, if that's the brand you're into, look at other bags that are round about the same price point so that when you get home and you've bought your bag, you can rest assured knowing that you bought something you truly love and there was nothing else there. You looked at all of it and you picked the best bag for you. But if you're not getting the best service, if the person serving you thinks you're a time waster and that you're not going to buy anything, it can be really hard to I want to say persuade that person to show you more of a range if they don't think you're going to buy anything and also there are two ways that you can get served there's digital queues which tend to happen more in busier stores where you enter you'll get added to a queue and then you get a text message when it's your turn but I'm, spe I'm speaking more about when you go in let's say off the street and there's nobody else in there how can you get served and how can you get good service so the first thing, and it's about the bag that you carry. I have noticed, and I'm gonna come onto it in a second to do with profiling, but I have noticed, even when I've been to the likes of Vista Village, which is an out designer outlet in the UK, I've seen salespeople, they look at you, they look at what you're wearing, they look at your bag, and then they will decide whether to approach you or not and to help you. Not always, but a lot of the time, a lot of the time I've seen it because it's been really obvious. If you go in with a fake bag, particularly if, let's say you've got a fake Dior and you go into Dior, the chances are the people working there, unless you've got a really good super fake, but even then, the chances are the people working there will know it's a fake. Even if it looks really real to you, there will be nuances about that bag that look fake. And as soon as you are clocked for having a fake, again, not all the time, but from the two that I've spoken to two people have told me about stories about this. For those two people, they took the customers less seriously. They assumed that the customer wasn't going to buy anything. Therefore, they weren't bending over backwards to help that person. They could be right, they could be wrong, but that was how it was taken. And so I would always say, if you are wondering what bag to take and let's say you haven't got your first designer bag yet because you're working your way up to it it doesn't matter whether your bag is coach or asos it is always better to take a more a, like a contemporary brand like coach kate spade or a, a, a high street brand like asos or topshop or wherever you want to get your bag from it's always better to take something like that than to take a fake in. So don't worry too much about your bag. Take in what you love and feel comfortable wearing it. Now the next thing, and it's to do with profiling, as I briefly mentioned there, and it's specifically to do with profiling based on your attire, what you're wearing. It shouldn't be the case 
but probably most of us do it without even thinking a lot of the time. But salespeople have targets, sales targets. And if two people walk into a boutique, one's dressed up, they've got the designer watch on, they've got the bag, they're covered in diamonds and beautiful clothes. And then somebody else walks in, in I'm just gonna use gym kit as an example. They're wearing their workout gear. You can get this really wrong but you sometimes would assume that the person dressed up in designer and diamonds and the watch, that's gonna be the person to spend the money and the other person isn't. Doesn't always happen. Not every salesperson is like this, I want to say, but I think it's very easy as human beings to judge a book by its cover. So I would say, if you want to be taken seriously, if you can't be bothered to fight to get service or to get good service, dress up and in this day and age of quiet luxury you don't have to be head to toe in logos either i really find a great place to dress from is reese reese is one of my favorite places you can get very well tailored clothes there and they last and if you go into chanel or dior or any of these brands and you're wearing reese you will feel right at home and reese doesn't have to break the bank. It's also the tip of the iceberg. There are so many other places that you can dress from. And I'm sure that even in your wardrobe at home, you've got things you can put together outfits that look sharp, that look on point. I always think a really good way of, to me at least, a really good way of making an outfit look uh, more chic and sharper is to wear a blazer. So even if you want to wear jeans, fine, wear jeans, but put a blazer on with it. It just elevates the look. The next point is to build a relationship with the salesperson. So you've gone in, this is your first time in store, you are being served. Whether you buy something or not, try and get the person's contact details. It's easier to do when you have bought something, I will say. However, I have also had it before where I haven't bought anything, but the salesperson has given me their card so that I can add them on WhatsApp. And the benefit to doing this is next time you want to go in, or if there's anything else you ever want, you have got that contact person's details and you can begin to develop a profile with that person, but also a relationship. And it can become quite nice when you gel with someone and you look forward to going in the boutique, not just to look at the products, but also to have a catch up with them. And I would definitely say that this is one way that you can absolutely build a rapport, but be taken more seriously. And furthermore, in future, let's say you walk in store and that person's not in, it helps when you can say, is so-and-so in, because it shows that you have a relationship. And then if that person isn't in, but you're served by someone else, that other person knows that you must be a sure thing because you're connected up with that, that other particular salesperson. And then the final thing that I would say is to know what it is that you want to look at. If you get served and you're kind of a bit like, oh, I don't really know what I'm here for. I want to have a look. There's nothing wrong with that. And actually very often, you might go there vaguely looking at one thing, but actually you want to be tempted. You want to know, what have you got in those drawers behind the counter? Open them up. Let me have a look at all of the earrings or all of the card holders. Show me what you've got. Tempt me. I've had times like that where I haven't necessarily wanted to look at any one thing in particular. I've just wanted to have a look at it all. But I do think that if you can start the conversation by wanting to look at one particular type of item, it breaks the ice and it allows you to then widen what you want to look at thereafter. So let's say you don't know what you want to look at. Start by saying, I want to look at brooches, as an example. They bring out the tray that's got all the brooches on it. Have a look. You might be tempted by one of the brooches, but if you're not, that's the point where you can say, do you know what, there's nothing here that I'm loving, but can I have a look at shoes with you? Or can I have a look at card holders? or necklaces, ready to wear, or even bags. But that's the point where you can really break the ice and find it easier to ask to look at other things without feeling like you're wasting that person's time. These are just my thoughts. There is nothing set in stone. They're just my, my thoughts on this topic. Um, so take what you will from this or take nothing at all if you don't agree with anything and that's completely fine. 
I hope these things have helped though and have given you some confidence. Um, of course, you might put these things into practice and it still doesn't work, you still don't get good service, but hopefully some of these things, give, as, just, as I say, give you that confidence to go in store uh, do these things and to feel like you're going to get that good service and hopefully you do. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.